Thank you, God, for the light. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So thankful for the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And for all that God is doing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So thankful that He is mindful of us. Yes. Amen. That Scripture alone is enough to astound me. Right. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Amen. Yeah. To on. think that the, the, an all-powerful, all-holy, almighty God would care enough for mankind right. that He would give the best that He had so that we wouldn't have to go to a devil's hell. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So that we would be able to go to heaven. Yes. Amen. Instead of going to hell. Amen. Hallelujah. The couple of Sundays that led up to our revival weekend, and I'm so thankful for the move of the Spirit that we had, the time of refreshing. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I tell you what, I got a drink. Hallelujah. Amen. My, my, my. More than one drink. Amen. Hallelujah. We had folk laying out in the aisle and laying across the Seats back there. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord was just in here in such a great and special way. And yes. I'm so thankful. So thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord's got us sort of back on the same topic today as we were the two Sundays before uh, Revival Weekend. Not exactly. It started out that way. And God has a way of bringing you around and, and making a big circle of things. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. But... I said in the two messages that we spoke on concerning revival, the last day revival, yes. that God has a way and man can't change that. Amen? Oh, we can hype things up and we can say that this preacher's going to bring revival or this, you know, I've heard people say, well, they'll, they'll never be the same once I get done with them. Well, you're probably right, but it won't be in a good way. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. But God has a way that things have to be done. Amen? Right. He always has had. He always will have. Right. Amen? And in order to have revival, God has given us a recipe. Yes. Now I'm sure you've watched the news this week. How that the Supreme Court, who in my view, have lost their mind. Right. Amen? True. Overturned the Defense of Marriage Act mm -hmm. and threw that out. Yep. Amen? And that's just in a long line of bad decisions they've been making. Right. Yeah. Somebody said this week that you're going to get put in jail if you keep preaching the truth. Well, they just have to get my cell ready. Amen? Because right. as long as I'm preaching, I intend to preach the truth. Amen? Right. I intend to call our government on the carpet whenever they're in the wrong. Amen? Right. That's what our men and women died for Amen. in the wars That's that we've right. had. Amen? Amen? So that I could stand here today and proclaim to you what I believe to be the truth. Amen. My freedom of speech. Amen? Yes. And whether they think so or not, we as born-again, fundamental Bible-believing believers right. have just as much right to voice our opinion and what we believe the truth is oh, as those that march down our streets yeah. and proclaim their sin as being their right in Come this on, nation. Bro. Amen? Come on. Great. So I intend to continue to sound the trumpet. Yes. To sound the... What are you going to do, Brother Billy? If they pass the law saying that you can't preach certain things, I'm going to keep on preaching just like I always have. Amen. I don't know no other way of doing it. Amen? That's right. I'm too... You know they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. I've been preaching too long to change now. Amen. Amen. I've had opportunities along the way yeah. where people would put their arm around me and say, you know, if you just change that, yeah. you could just fall right into our denomination. Come on. Amen. Come on. I told one preacher, if I went with your denomination, I'd have to fall. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said it halfway joking, but there was a grain of truth in it. Oh, Amen. Yeah. So I don't intend to have one man say that I should be preaching the kingdom doctrine, the kingdom theology. You know, the kingdom of heaven is within us. Heaven's not a real place. It's inside of you. Yeah. Well, I know God hadn't called me to call that because that ain't to, to preach that because that ain't the truth. Amen. Amen. God don't call you to preach a lie. That's right. Devil might. Yeah. Amen. You may be called. You might have answered the call, but it might have been the devil on the other line, other end. Amen. Yeah. Instead of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
So we're just going to keep on preaching what we've always preached. Yes, Lord. And that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen? The only way, the only truth, and the only life. Amen. Amen. The only way to get to God. Right. But God's got a recipe for revival. Right. And it's 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, and all of us should know it by heart. Right. And you will not get revival. You will not get a refreshing. You will not get a season of refreshing without this. Right. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Wait a minute. You mean it didn't say if they'll build them a multi-million dollar ministry complex? No. It didn't say if they build them a big arena so that they can have events? If my people which are called by my name will get some drama teams? Hmm? No. No? If my people which are called by my name will get some entertainment? Doesn't say that either, does it? No. Bells and whistles and lights and smoke. Hmm. That's what the church believes you have to have in order to have a move of God. And I told someone this week, they have to have those things. Because if you do not know the real move of the Spirit of the Lord, you have to substitute it with something. Right. Amen? You have to get something to get the people interested and entertained. True. I got news for you today. If Jesus ain't enough to keep you interested, you might ought to come to the altar this morning. Amen? Amen. If, if we have to entertain you, if we have to woo you with worldly things to get you in, if we have to woo you with worldly things to keep you. Amen. See, that's why a lot of people church hop. It ain't so much that their pastor's not preaching the truth. It might be. But even if their pastor's preaching the truth, a lot of people won't stick because you can't keep them excited because Jesus ain't enough for them anymore. Amen. They have to have drama teams. They have to have, they have, to have cliques. They have to have clubs. They have to have entertainment. They have to have something to keep them interested. Yeah. Jesus is enough to keep me interested today. Amen? Yeah. And if He's not enough for you, you're in trouble. Yeah. So the Word of God says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen? If my people will get serious with me, if they'll begin to seek my face, not, not use me as a vending machine, pick what flavor and what size I want, what they want, and just push a button and say, give it to me, Lord. Amen? Come on. If, they'll get, if they'll begin to seek my face, if I can find me some Davids out somewhere seeking my face and after my heart, amen, oh, then I'll pour my spirit out. Yeah. There were a lot of heart players in David's day. There were a lot of singers in David's day. As a matter of fact, the king appointed singers and players and things like that. But when Saul needed deliverance, when he needed the very presence of God to deliver him from tormenting devils, Brother David, you know who he he sent for he sent for a little boy that had been out on the hip out on the hillside in the presence of a living God seeking after the heart of God his musicians couldn't do it your entertainment will not do it what you have to offer them in, out of yourself and out of what the world offers will leave them empty and undone oh but if you can give them Jesus today that's what a cure what else will they be in Yes, Lord. He's still the cure. Amen. He's still the cure all. Lord bless, brother. You know they used to come around in wagons. Yeah. And we still got some preachers on TV doing this today. Yeah. <laughs> Buy my holy water. Yeah. Drink it. It take care of your innards. Take a bath in it. Yeah. It take care of your outards. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We still got some snake oil salesmen today. Oh, Amen. Right. We got a lot of them that climb behind the pulpit in their mega church this morning peddling their think happy books. Amen. Yeah. And their holy water yeah. and their special beads oh, and right. everything else they have to offer. Amen. Their gold yeah. dust and their angel feathers. Amen. Oh, right. they, so this ain't no new thing. It's always been like that. You can offer them your holy water and they'll stay the same. You can offer them your think good book and they'll stay the same. But if you can get them to take a hold of Jesus. That's the life changer. Amen? Right. Amen. 
Amen. If you want to know what keeps us going, if you want to know why we get letters from 80, little 87 year old ladies that said that, that they, they listen to the program every Sunday, they're homebound, and they can't get out of their fed by it. If you want to know why we get letters from people that are being fed by the Word, it's not because of us. God can do this without us, but it's because we realize we can't do this without Him. Amen? It's because we ain't got the spotlight on us. We got the spotlight on Jesus. Amen? Bless Him, Lord. That's what we have to offer. That's what we have to offer. Yes, sir. And if the church can learn that, if the church can get a hold of that today, yeah. and realize that Jesus is still the answer, He's still the source. Amen. That's right, brother. Not our fancy evangelist. Come on. Brother Carter came and he obeyed the Lord. Yeah. And God worked through him. Amen. I've known him for 20 years and I haven't seen the Lord work through him any greater than he did last weekend. Praise Amen. Praise God used him. Right. God worked through him. Come on. But Brother Carter was not our focus of attention. Right. Amen. True. We got in here and we lifted up Jesus. Yes. We begin to lift up Jesus. Amen. We begin to worship Jesus. Right. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And he'll start with you. Amen. If you're lifting him up, he said, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. Amen. God's recipe for revival has not changed. It's still the same. Amen. Say, Brother Billy, but that's Old Testament. I'm glad that you're listening today. Amen. Acts the third chapter. Yeah. Acts the third chapter of the 19th verse. Let's see what they preach to these people here. This is New Testament. This is after the cross. This is after the ascension. This is after the Comforter has come. This is after the Holy Ghost has fallen that morning in the upper room. Amen? And caused those old boys to... They didn't. They just didn't act just right. Amen? We had some people last weekend that wasn't just acting just right. Amen? Hallelujah. Under the under the, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Brother Winford laying up here drunk. Brother Mike laying back there drunk. Brother David laying back there passed down the Spirit. Amen? All of them under the influence of something. Amen? But then that alcohol wasn't involved in it. It was the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? God's got something that'll get you high today. And you ain't got to worry about no hangover. You ain't got to worry about waking up in jail the next morning. You ain't got to worry about waking up next to somebody in the bed looking over and thinking, who in the world is that? Amen? He's got something for you today. He's got a spiritual high that he'll get over you. Amen? Hallelujah! Just like him old boy staggered out on the Pentecost and begin to preach. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Come on, preacher. So we find over here in the book of Acts, the third chapter. Yeah. Listen to what they tell them, 19th verse. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Yeah. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The word refreshing there means recovery. Come on. It means revival. Right. It means to relieve. It means to refresh. It means to cool off. Especially during the summer months, we can relate to this, when the heat index is 105. Yes. And you've been outside doing yard work. You need to find somewhere to get refreshed. Amen. You need to find somewhere. That don't bother me. I preached when drunks was running out of the bushes before. Amen. So in whatever noise is going on, that's okay. Just listen to me. There is a refreshing that takes place when you find somewhere cool. When you find somewhere where you can get a drink of water when you're thirsty. When you're in the desert and you need an oasis. Amen. And all of us get in that place. All of us get to the place where that we are dry and we're thirsty. And not that God has left us, but we need to feel His presence. Amen. We need to see Him move. We need to get our thirst quenched. And we find this all through the Bible. And we can have this when we obey His Word. Whenever we seek Him, when we humble ourselves, he, what did He say He would do? He said, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Right. He was talking about a natural rain and a spiritual rain. Amen? Amen? That He will open up the windows of heaven and pour it out Amen. upon His people. When we seek God, when we turn to God with our heart, Amen. America will never 
be the nation she was again unless she turns to God. Amen. And I don't see much hope in that considering the fact she has expelled him from our classrooms. She's kicked him out of the White House. She's kicked him out of Congress. She's kicked him out of the courthouse. Amen. So I don't see much in the way of any hope for that today. That's right. Oh, but I see something for the remnant. I see something for the people today. If they'll get serious with God, if they'll begin to seek the Lord, if they'll begin to humble themselves, find an old-fashioned altar and seek the face of God and call on Jesus. Not Allah, not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Mary. Amen. But Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Then He will hear from heaven. Amen. Then He will heal their land. Then we will see the outpouring of the Spirit of God that we talked about that was symbolized by the rain of the hand that came up out of the out of the sea in the shape of a man's hand where the abundance of rain was so much that Elijah said, Hey Ahab, get where they have. Tell him you better get to the house because it's going to be raining so hard he ain't going to be able to get there. Amen. All right. The rain's coming. True. The rain's coming. There's going to be a season yes. of revivals. There's going to be seasons of revivals. Come on. Refreshing. All right. God's going to get His people through. Yes. Just like whenever the prophet was up by the brook uh -huh. and it was a famine. Mm -hmm. It was a drought. Brother Sleazy drank from the brook and the ravens brought him something to eat every day. God's going to supply the needs of those that will seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Amen. All these things will be added to you. All these things will be taken care of. God's going to feed His people. Amen. We ain't going to starve to death. Somehow, someway, God has always made a way. He, he filled an empty meal barrel. He filled an empty cruise of all. He ain't going to let you down, Brother Tyler. Amen. He, David said, I've never seen the right just forsaken or God saved begging for bread and he ain't going to start with you brother David Amen. I realize sometimes you can't just look a little low your refrigerator ain't got nothing in it but a piece of blown and one piece of cheese maybe but God's going to take care of you if you will seek him first if you'll trust God he's going to lead us out of the desert he's going to bring us into a season of refreshing he's going to pour his spirit out upon those that will seek him That's right, brother Bill. upon those that are serious with him He's still looking. Yes. And I can't say it much better than Brother Sleece did this morning. Right. He's still looking for somebody that's after his heart. Right. He's still he sees the religious crowd. Amen. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't impress him. Right. He sees those that have knowledge. Knowledge doesn't impress him. True. It's what your heart's after. That's it, brother. David said, as the heart panteth after the water brook, yeah. so I pan after thee. That's not a direct quote, but you get my meaning. As the deer is thirsty and searches for the water brook to quench his thirst, Lord, I thirst after you. Amen. Knowing that he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness the same shall be filled. Right. Amen. Amen. You find over there, and I'm not going to get to it this morning because I'm done so wound up I can't even hardly read my scriptures. Amen. Well, you, if you, you go over there to, to Kings where we read about the fire falling. That's in First Kings, the 19th chapter. The 18th right. chapter. The 18th chapter. The fire fell. The rain came. And we've seen how that happened. We've been learning what it takes to have the presence of God. I'm telling you, I'm not preaching legalism this morning, and I know that I'll get branded with that by doing so, but sin will still cause God's presence to be withdrawn from you. Amen. Amen. Right. God has never blessed sin he ain't even start now. He ain't even said, well, bless their heart. I'm just going to go ahead and bless them anyway, even though they're committing adultery and fornicating and, and sanctioning every ungodly thing under the sun. No, 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 no. Sin still costs more than you're able to pay. Amen. Amen. Sin still takes you out somewhere. You, you think, where in the world am I at? Right. You get lost. You take the sin train. Amen. But even after that, we find in the 19th chapter, after this great experience that Elijah had on Mount Carmel, right. and God sent in the fire, the prophets of Baal being killed, and then the water come, the rain coming. Uh -huh. We find Elijah in chapter 19, 1 Kings 19, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, 
If I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now, Jezebel sent word to Elijah, you're fixing to be dead tomorrow because of what you've done to my prophets. Amen? Amen. And when he saw that, when Elijah saw that, he arose and he went for his life and he came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Now listen, listen to where Elijah's at. You see, sometimes the man of God needs refreshing too. Amen. Sometimes the pastor needs your prayers the same way you need his. I, I, all the time the pastor needs your prayers the same way that you need his. Right. The pastor needs help. Amen. Listen, this is the man that stood on Mount Carmel and faced down the prophets of Baal. And here we find him. It says in verse 4, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Here we find the man of God in a dry place. In a place where he needed refreshing. He needed something from the Lord. Amen? Yeah. He had just faced the prophets of Baal. He had just seen a great revival. The people that could not answer Him when He said, How long hold you between two opinions? Once the fire fell, those same people began to say, The Lord, He is God. Yeah. The Lord, He is God. Amen. And here we find Elijah. And we get in these places as we walk through our journey. We get tired. Amen? Amen. We get weak. Right. We get dry. Right. We, get, we long for that oasis in the wilderness. Amen. Says he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and he sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him. Now here comes here comes his refreshing. Right. Here he's fixing to get some strength. Amen. Amen. It says an angel touched him and woke him up and said, Arise and eat. Yeah. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of oil, a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink. I'm in verse 6. He did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. I'm not strengthening you so you can stay in the same place. He gets up and he eats and he gets strengthened. Amen. And he lays down. He don't move. He stays where he's at. The angel comes to him the second time and says, Awake, eat some more because the journey that you're about to embark on is more than you can handle without some strength. So, listen to me. We're going to have to have times of refreshing. The Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. In order to endure to the end, we're going to have to have times of refreshing. We're going to have to have seasons of revival. We're going to have to have times where the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us in such a great way and gives us strength and revitalizes us and fills our tank back up. Amen. Get, get our wick trimmed and, and, and get some oil back in our, in our, in our, in our lamp. Amen. Right. So that we can let our light shine. This is awake. Eat this because the journey is great. And listen to this. And the angel of the Lord said to him again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. We've got to realize we can't make it on our own. Amen. Amen. The journey is too great for you. Amen. You can't go in your own strength. We've got a lot of people who try to go in their own strength. Right. Well, I'll just live this thing in my own strength. I'll just live this thing in my own flesh. I'll do this thing myself. You can't do this thing yourself. You'll never make it. Right. You'll never make it unless you realize the source today is not you. You'll never make it today unless you realize today that the source is not man. The source is not religion. The source is not denominationalism. The source is not the great self-help preachers. Amen? The source is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? That's where we get our strength. So he gets up and he eats. And the Bible says, He arose and did eat and he drank, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto yeah. Horeb, the mount of God. Now we could go ahead and read of the experience that he had up there on Mount Horeb in the cave. But uh, the meat that I want you to get out of that is that he couldn't make it on his own. He had to have strength. 
The angel said, you don't have enough strength. You can't take, you can't make this journey alone. You can't make it within your own strength. We need to realize today the church thinks they don't need Jesus no more. Amen. Yeah. The church thinks there's no greater example of that than the one in Revelation when he talks to the layout of sins. You're rich, increased with goods. You, and you, think, you, you think you have need of nothing. But you're poor and you're blind and you're miserable and you're naked. Yeah. Why? Because we find the source that they really needed was outside knocking because he couldn't get in. Right. There was no room left. You see, that's what's happened in a lot of churches. There's no room left for Jesus. Amen. We preach that around Christmas time, but that'll work. Oh, that'll work 12 months out of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's no room anymore for Jesus. Right. We've got our denomination. We've got our camp meetings. We've got our conventions. We've got our drama teams. We've got our clubs. We've got our our cliques and we've got all of the events and we've got all the latest happenings and we've got all of the, the, the things that we're doing. And we've worked Him right out of the program because we've got time for everything else and everyone else except for Him. And if He shows up and tries to mess up our stuff, we just set Him outside. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We just set Him outside. And that's where we find them and that's where you'll find yourself unless you realize what the source today is. Right. The source for revival is not a big name preacher. Right. The source for your feeding is not your pastor. Now, he may be the vessel that God brings it through. But if he's not getting it from the source, he ain't going to be able to help you. Yeah, really, Amen? Really. He ain't going to be able to help you. If he gets it from this book learning, and if he gets it from the, the seminary and from the college and all of that, if that's all he's got, he's not going to be able to help you. What he's got is going to be dry. It's going to leave you walking away thinking, I don't even know what he really preached on. He bounced from here, he bounced from there, he had this scripture, he had that scripture, but he didn't really teach me anything. Amen? Wow. We need to realize today our source is not our denomination. Our source is not our religion. Our source is not where we meet. Our source is Him. Amen? Amen? True. Our source is Him. Wow. That's where Elijah got his strength from. That's who he says, if you'll seek me, if you'll turn from your wicked ways, I, not man, but I will pour out my spirit. I will heal your land. Mm -hmm. He is our source today, and we lose sight of that. Right. And that keeps us from seeing real revival. We must realize who the source is. Right. Amen? True. Turn with me to a book not much read. Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Zechariah, the fourth chapter. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the first verse, verse says, and the angel, I want you to see something here before we go this morning. I want you to get this. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is awakened out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? Now Zechariah's going to tell us what he saw. And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps. That's what, that's how it got the oil. We drew upon the top thereof. Now Zechariah doesn't see a man-made source for these candles to burn. Let's see what Zechariah sees. Where was this candle getting its... Where was this candlestick with the set of lamps? Where was it getting its source? Where was it getting its oil from? Listen to what he sees. And two olive trees by it. One upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Listen to me. Don't, don't miss this. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, 
saying, now he's getting ready to explain what he's saying. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Where was this candlestick? Like the one you see up here in this tabernacle chart. Where was its source of oil? You see, normally man would have to supply the oil. Would have to pour it in to where it could be fed to each one of the flames. This candlestick had no man-made source for the oil. There was a tree that God had planted on the left side. There was a tree that God had planted on the right side. An olive tree that produced the oil that caused the candlestick to put out the light. And when Zechariah says, what does this mean? The Lord says, it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That was the source Regardless of what the scholars, you can read a hundred different interpretations of the exact meaning of the two olive trees. Either way, it all comes down to one thing. God was the source. His Spirit was the source for the feeding of the oil into this candlestick in order for it to bring forth light. It was not man-made. Man, man, man cannot do this. Right. Theology cannot do this. Right. Seminary cannot do this. Amen. Denominationalism cannot do this. Amen. It's not by might. Not by man's strength. Not by man's power. But by the Spirit of the Lord. What took place on the day of Pentecost was not man made. It was God sent. Amen. Oh. The, the, the outpouring that Joel spoke of was not one that was going to be man made. Man had to prepare his heart. Man had to get ready for it. But it was God sent. All right. The church has to realize Amen. That the Spirit doesn't come from your Harlem shake right. and getting people all enthused with emotion. Yeah. The Spirit comes from the source. Right. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the door. He is the living water. He is that anointing oil. Amen. Right. Of course, He works by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But the Spirit, by my Spirit, saith the Lord. We have to realize... Listen, in order to ever see, in order to, I talked about America not being able to get back where she used to be. Right. The church will never be the spiritual powerhouse that it once was unless we realize the source. Amen. The one that should have the spotlight. And it's not the preacher in the $5,000 Armani, Armani suit yeah. that we praise. Amen. It's not the bestseller. It's not the praise and worship leader. Our source is Him. Yes. Amen. Right. He should be the one in the spotlight. Absolutely. Not the preacher. Not the singer. Not the song leader. Not the Sunday school teacher. Him. Right. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about seeing a time of refreshing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Let your light so shine before men. It speaks of us as candles. Right. As lamps, Amen. if you want to call it that, that give forth a light. Lamps don't work without the source, the oil. Right. And the oil cannot be man-made or conjured up. Amen. It has to come from the oh, from the throne by way of the cross exactly. through the work of the Holy Spirit. Come on. In order for us to shine our light before men, Amen. so that they can see. Our light shining, right. and that God would be glorified in heaven. Right. Oh, I don't know if you're getting that this morning, or not. Amen. But this candle stick that Zachariah saw did not burn of its own. You cannot make it on your own. Yes. You cannot be the shining light you need to be without oil in your vessel. True. And that oil is not man-made. Come on. Our source is Him. Right. Our source is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. And I'm closing. Go with me to Revelation, the first chapter. Revelation, the first chapter. 
<clears throat> John on the Isle of Patmos. <laughs> Poor old John out there. Done been exiled. And <laughs> dumb old rulers, they thought we'd just, we just shut him up for good. Mm. Wrote one of the Wrote one of the most powerful books in the Bible from the place where he was at out there on that rock pile. Revelation like no man has ever had before and, had, and to my knowledge hadn't had since. Listen to what he says. Revelation 1 and 7. And don't forget the candlestick and the fact that it was burning without a man-made source that was getting its oil from those two trees. It says, Behold, He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall, be, shall see Him. In verse 7. <clears throat> and they also which pierced Him, and all kindreds of the earth, shall wail because of Him. Even so, Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, <clears throat> saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Now this is what I want to get to, but that other was too good to skip on. <clears throat> I, John, who also am your, am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom of the patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He's telling us why he was there. He was there because he was being persecuted, being uh, uh, punished for his stand for Jesus. We may not get out of here without suffering some punishment for our stand for Jesus. Amen? I know we don't like to think about that, but we might not. I don't know how bad things are going to get before we get out of here, but they're already getting bad. They're going to get worse. Amen? Amen. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day yeah. and heard behind the sea, oh, I, I can't stop there and preach on that. I don't have time, Brother Tyler. He wasn't on the couch. Amen? Yeah. He wasn't in the bed. He wasn't over Ryan stuffing his guts. Amen? He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Yeah. And he heard behind, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now listen. I want you to remember what Zechariah saw. I want you to look at what John sees. He heard a voice that was like a trumpet behind him saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And he goes on and names the churches. Go down to verse 12. It says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. What did Zachariah see? He saw a candlestick whose source was not man-made, but it was from the olive trees that God had planted on either side. He said, I turned and I saw seven golden candlesticks. But then something greater gets his attention. Now we'll learn in a minute that these seven golden candlesticks represented the churches. Yeah. Amen. Amen represented the churches that John was getting ready to write to. But the churches, the candlestick that represented the churches, didn't get John's attention as much as what he saw next. The source. Listen to me. The source. In the midst, or in the center, in the middle of it, what drawn his attention in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like a fine brass, as if they had burned in a furnace, and his voice the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Amen? I know you know what that means. And his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, not when I saw the candlesticks, but when I saw him. You see, if we'll get hooked up to the right source, when they look at us, the church, they won't see the church. They'll see him. Amen. That's why we can't get very many people inside anymore because that's all they see is the church. Right. They don't see enough of Him, Brother Dave. They don't see enough of Him, Brother Sleece. They see too much of us. Right. Amen. True. But John said when he saw Him, not the candlesticks, but the one that was giving 
the candlesticks, they're light. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Huh. That might be a little bit of scripture to back up being fell out in the spirit. Amen. All right. Send that to that preacher on Facebook. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Do I have to tell you who that was today? That was Jesus. Amen. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. He said, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now, whether they be spiritually, that each angel, that each church had an angel, or if it meant the minister, the pastor that was over that church in that particular area, either way, could have meant both. Amen. The seven stars and the are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, listen to me. Zachariah's candlestick stands there illuminated, not by man's might, not by man's power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. We see these candlesticks which represent the church right. in the book of Revelation. Now it represents different uh, uh, individual churches, but the church as a whole is one body, supposed to be. Amen. Right. And in the midst of that, in the center of that, at the very attention of that, was Jesus. That's where we've missed it. Amen. Listen to me. I hope you're getting this out there today. That's where we've missed it. We got our attention on everything but Him. That's right. We're so busy. 18 hours a day doing whatever. Yeah. We don't have time to focus on Him. But when we focus on Him, when we get Jesus back to being in the spotlight of the church, in the midst of the golden candlesticks, higher, brighter than the church. Amen? Put Him back to where He's supposed to be at the head of this thing. Amen? He's supposed to be the head of the church, not the Pope. Yeah. Amen? Right. Not the Pope. The Pope's position is not even biblical. As a matter of fact, in, as far as the Bible's concerned, it's heresy. Amen. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Right. Come on. If we'll let Him be, exactly. we will see His Spirit. What was His message? Basically, His message, I know He said different things to the different churches there. But all of them that had backslid, all of them that weren't doing what they were supposed to do, the main message to them was the same one that He spoke to the one that He said, you've left your first love. Amen? Amen. You've left your first love. That's basically what all of them had done. Amen. That He rebuked. The ones that He rebuked basically was, you've left me out. Amen. You've left me out. The church has left Him out. Right. Amen? Right. You have left me out. Amen. Somehow I've become of no use to you anymore. Right. You've learned how to preach. You've learned how to excite the crowd. Yeah. You don't need me or my spirit anymore. Come on. You've forsaken the source. Right. What did he say? And I didn't write this, I don't have this scripture down up here. But he said, My people have forsaken two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, yeah. the source. And they have created or made for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns mm. that can hold no water. All right. We've forsaken the source. Right. That is the cancer that eats at the body of the church today. Amen. They don't need Him. They have their program. They have it laid out. They know what they're going to do from the time it starts to the time it closes. They don't need Jesus. Come on. Because He ain't enough for them anyway. Absolutely. If you don't keep your group excited, you're fixing to lose them. Somebody else will excite them. Right. Until we find us a place at an old-fashioned altar right. and begin to seek after God, Amen. not after entertainment, not after denominationalism praise. Not after all the things that man has to offer. But until we get connected to the source. Amen. Amen. We'll have no power. True. We'll have no power. 
Right. Amen. Right. We can plug it. We can plug everything we got up into these these receptacles along the wall here. Right. But if those receptacles were not connected to the power pole, right. there'd be no power to anything we plugged in there. Right. You go to churches and you get plugged in. Come on. And all you got is artificial man-made stuff that will not last you from one Sunday to the next. Right. Listen to me. Tribulation's coming. You better get somewhere where you can get a hold of something that's going to sustain you. That's going to give you some staying power. Come it's going to take more than Hollywood. Yeah. It's going to take more than fortune cookies. Yeah, I never got so sick of, of, of Christians uh, posting and talking about, well, you know, what my fortune cookie said, what my horoscope said, what, what I learned from this one preacher. I read something he posted yesterday on his blog. He was talking about the great prophetic mysteries in the new Batman movie. Almost made me want to puke. Amen. God has given us a source today for answers. And it's not Hollywood. It's not a fortune cookie. It's not a horoscope. It's His Word. Open it up and read it. Amen. It's His Word. True. His Word. Right. And when we get Jesus back where He belongs in the church, you see, He's a jealous God. Yes. He won't stay where he ain't wanted. That's right, brother. Oh, let that sink in. That's old fashioned right there, brother Dave. Amen. Because we think we can live like hell and still experience the blessings of God. Right. No, when you make a covenant and an agreement with hell, that's exactly what you'll get. That's right, Amen. Right. Sin still separates from God. Amen. Amen. If we get him first, when Peter and John Walked up to the... You see, and that's why the church ain't helping too many people. Right. Oh, we're seeing crowds in certain places and stuff, but yeah. when Peter and John walked up there to the temple that day and that man looked at them expecting to receive something, what'd they offer him? They could have offered that man money if they had any. They broke. They preachers. Amen. If you're a real preacher, you ain't going to have much money. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo! That may make some of them mad. They didn't have money to give him, but if they had, say they'd have had money today. Yeah. And that crippled man was laying there. Brother Tyler, sit down here on the floor. Get on your crippled bed. The crippled man laying there, begging for something. He's yeah. needing some money. Uh -huh. Amen. Hold on a minute. If Peter and John, Mama. Had have had some money. They didn't, but they, if they'd had any. Yeah. If they'd have went up there with the least and they'd have gave him, if they'd have gave him everything he had, mm -hmm. he would have remained crippled. Yeah. Nothing would have changed. Oh, he might have had something to sustain him for a day or two. Because money goes quicker than it comes. Amen. Right. He would have still been crippled. That's the way the world is. Amen. If you offer them your entertainment, they will stay crippled. If you offer them your Oh, if you offer them your religion, they will stay crippled. But Peter and John looked at him and said, Listen, silver and gold, have I none? If I had any, it wouldn't do you no good anyway. You'd still be crippled. But such as I have. See, the church got to have him in order to be able to give him away. Amen? we got to get connected to the source so that we can get the all, let our light shine, and see miracles once again. He said, Silver and gold. Have I none? But such as I have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and he got up off of his, oh, his crippled bed. And hallelujah. You ain't done yet, Brother Tyler. Get up here. The Bible says he began to leap and praise God. Jump up and down. Hallelujah. He began to leap and praise God. He could have offered him money. He'd have still been crippled. If he'd have offered him doctrine, he'd have still been crippled. But he said, I got Jesus and I'm going to give that to you. Amen. Right. True. You might as well. You're wasting your time. Come on, preach. Giving anything else to the world. Yeah, right. Because they're still going to stay dead. Right. They're still going to say stay lost. Amen. They're still going to stay bound. Yeah. But if we can get connected to the source, if we can get Jesus, 
in the center of the church if we can get him back on the throne of our heart if we can get him to be the center of our world amen and he's the one that we we revolve around he's our center he's our rock he's our lord he's our savior he's more than just a story he's our king of glory we can go outside those walls and when somebody needs help we can say listen buddy i ain't got no money but i got something better amen i ain't got much talent but i got something better i ain't got no entertainment but i got something better i ain't got no religion but i got something better i ain't got nothing but i ain't got to listen to me i ain't got what the world offers but i got something better amen if we can get connected to the source we can give them jesus and they won't be crippled no more they won't be dead no more they won't be undone no more Help us to get the spotlight back on Jesus and off of the preacher and off of the singers and off of the groups and back on Jesus. Amen. It's time we let him be the star of the show. Yes. Amen. Come on, Let's let him headline for a while. Amen. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can search through all of the book of Revelation right. and all the things that John described. I couldn't, you might, but I couldn't find much more detail that he gave to anything or anyone than he did the one he saw standing in the midst of those candlesticks. He didn't describe the candles. The candles weren't there to get the glory. They were feeding off of the glorified one. Amen. I wish we could get... I've seen preachers fight, get mad, get jealous. Right. They didn't name me. They didn't ask me to preach. Yeah. They didn't call me. It ain't about you. Come on. It ain't about me. Right. It's about Him. Amen. Amen. And if we don't lose sight of that church, we'll be all right. That's right. But the minute we lose sight right. of that it's all about Him and not about us, then we're in trouble. Amen. That's all right, Brother Dave. I'm about done anyway. Hallelujah. When we lose sight of Him, when we get disconnected from the source, you see, I can go up here today and I can cut the power off to that air. And that air can't run without the power. It can't cool you off. You can come in here 100 degrees outside, probably 110 in here. You can't get refreshed. You can't get cool. People that are looking for an oasis, when they're looking for answers, when they go in churches and don't find it because they're not offering them the answer. They offer them everything else. Church membership. Church member recognition. A spot on the board. They need Jesus. They don't need your best selling book of your best life now or my positive way of thinking will get you out and out or whatever. <laughs> Amen. Heard one dummy say the reason Jesus could walk out there on the ship and say peace be still to the storm, the reason he could do that is because he had peace in himself, within himself. It might have something to do with the fact he was the Son of God. Amen. God in the flesh. Your power of positive thinking ain't going to get you. Ain't going to keep you out of hell. Amen. Only Jesus. He's our source today. He was the source of the candlesticks in Zechariah. He was the source of the churches in the book of Revelation. And the Lord spends the first couple of chapters there trying to tell the churches, I'm still enough. You think you're rich, increasing goods, have need of but I'm still enough. We find him over there at the end, the last part of the third chapter, knocking, saying, if you're open to me, I'll sup with you and you with me, but not until you let me in. Get me back in the center where I'm supposed to be. That's where he wants. Amen. He's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And our, our activities and our entertainment grieve his spirit when it takes the focus off of him. Amen. Anything that takes the focus off of Jesus ain't good. Amen. So let's stay connected to the source today. Let's get fueled. That way our light will shine when we go out of those doors. Somebody will see something in us and they'll glorify our Father in heaven. Someone else this morning have something before we go.